Mark, welcome to the IRTV studio at IRX 2018. Uh, before we dive in, yep. uh, tell everyone uh, your role and a little bit about Maginus, please. So, uh, my name is Mark Thornton, as you say. I am the Chief Operating Officer at Maginus Software Solutions. Um, Maginus are an organization that uh, sells multi-channel IT solutions to retailers. And that includes the whole soup and nuts of an implementation to help organizations do three things. Yeah. Sell more, closer to full price, um, deliver on their promises that they made to their customers, and do all that in a secure environment. Good, now we've, we've known each other for too many years to quote, and you know, over that time, you know, the range of services you offer, the level of integration, yeah. uh, you know, has a place in the market, but I think what's been interesting to me is seeing how the nature of the relationship you're having with retailers is changing. Yes. Now, we've been talking uh, quite a lot about the change in relationship between, say, supplier, vendor, um, service owner, outsource provider. Yeah. And it seems to me as if we're moving into a world of a more blended, modular set of yeah. relationships. So you know, how would you characterize this new way of okay. operating with retailers? Well, I think, firstly, it's worth saying that uh, maybe imagine some noticing it more than your average vendor uh, because of the, um, the approach that we have to supplying all the solutions mm -hmm. uh, for a multi-channel uh, 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 retailer. So um, we have in the past observed that every retailer wants a one-stop shop for all their solutions. And, uh, and now we're seeing that retailers are sort of pulling that apart a little bit and they're trying to be uh, more agile, more flexible with, with their approach mm -hmm. now. But this isn't just agility as an abstract. Um, we've been working on a white paper for the last couple of months uh, looking behind the scenes at how senior commercial leaders approach outsourcing and what we found is that the service themselves is no longer here's something for you but it's become much more modular yeah and bits are coming in and out and being given to different partners yeah and it is interesting because um we've observed in, in our customers uh that parts of their business that you were thought were core competencies that they mm. had customer interactions and maybe a call center delivery being an obvious one um, they're actually looking to outsource and the question is why they're doing that mm -hmm. and um, my belief is it's it, the more more forward-thinking retailers are looking at it uh, from a, you know this is something we have to do to keep up with customer demand and, mm -hmm. and, and, and changing customer needs and it's actually those retailers who aren't forward-thinking who are not creating uh, an agile uh, modular uh, infrastructure, whether that be IT or actually whether it be the components of their business, they will struggle. So yeah. um, we've seen in the press, uh, maybe Toys R Us just haven't kept up with consumer demand, the changing needs of the consumer. And maybe they'll, they, that's the reason why they've struggled. And we might see that with carpet rights, that maybe their online presence isn't um, what it should be. And maybe there are other examples that we could go through. Um, but it's interesting that you know we're talking about IT models where we've had microservices, uh, a modularity, APIs, headless commerce. Yeah. So as if the technology uh, that the developers there are sort of leeching into business, where even our marketing, our consumer services, our uh, our interaction with customers are themselves now becoming more modular so that you can yeah. give parts away. Where does it stop? Yeah. Where does it stop? But you, you, I think the thoughtful retailer is going, right, what, is, what, what, what am I going to get most bang for my book in terms yeah. of a return on investment? Mm -hmm. So what are, what are third parties better at yes. than what is yeah. inside my four walls of my business? Mm -hmm. And you could break that apart to the point where a retailer just becomes a brand yeah. uh, with some buyers and, 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 and a merchandising and promotioning, promotion arm. Um, Which a lot of the global brands were when they were wholesale with their marketing and limited sales yeah. angle. And maybe you can learn from that history. Um, 
but I also think that retailers are actually just subcontracting things that are actually difficult. Yeah. And um, what is difficult nowadays, um, delivery of course is difficult. Yeah. Um, uh, actually uh, having your inventory distributed in uh, many different places across uh, uh, the UK so that you can do next day delivery. These are all difficult things. Absolutely. And, it, and also things where an individual retailer doesn't have the capacity or the capability to build that network, but yet still wants it to be distinctive to them. And it's expensive to do. Yeah. yeah. So that's why you see the 3PL model. But what was interesting, I mean, we've covered uh, you know, interviews and case studies with retailers across the whole spectrum. And the one thing that struck me uh, just reading our notes was that everybody, whether in IT, logistics, uh, a smaller charity up to, you know, one of the nation's favorite department stores, they all said, look, this is driven by the customer. We have to marshal and deploy all of our abilities and our partners to service the customer and be distinctive. Yes. And to me, that was a real change rather than saying, we're good at X, we're good at Y. It's as if even the best people are saying, it doesn't matter how good we are, unless we're servicing the customer. And that's why you need to go to the best to do it. Yeah. But it comes with the downside. And this is where some of the retailers will worry. They will worry that they're losing control. They will worry that they're losing uh, their brand. If they're watering it down throughout uh, an enterprise, a, a, a collaboration mm -hmm. of, of outsourcing. Uh, however, I think what's, what's key to making it successful is, um, is keeping control of the data. Yeah. So always, always collecting information about each and every customer touch point, mm. uh, maintaining those K KPIs and all those things yeah. are to do with having an IT solution. And that's where my comes IT in. An IT solution that supports the business. So look, I think you've touched on a number of things there. We've spoken you know, about the customer importance, Keywords that came out were collaboration, data, control, yep. visibility. So let's not give everything away yet. So uh, I'm pleased to say that the white paper we've done together uh, is upon the point of publication. So we put the link below, so sign up, uh, get the details about how we're taking a new view of this modular, flexible, agile approach to outsourcing or right sourcing, uh, as Mark called it, uh, as well as maybe some predictions of how this trend is going to develop in the near future. Mark, thanks for calling by. Pleasure talking to you again. Always.